Okay, now you're actually live. Oh, hi, everyone. Thank you. All right, sorry about chat that. Chat helping you out with that? Yes. Good, thank you, chat. Uh, I was just saying welcome to Indie 3. And uh, today is, it's 1 p.m., so this is usually our official starting time, but we uh, have been creative with our schedule and fluid, like we always are. And But this time, for the better, we've been bringing you guys more content and more cool stuff. Um, speaking of which, we are about to start a um, interview. We're going to have an interview to start off the official schedule of Indie 3 on this channel. Meanwhile, there's another. Uh, there's a panel on game music and music games going on in Indie 4. Um, both are going to be really, really amazing. And they will be archived too, so if you miss one or you miss the other, um, there will be places for them on Hitbox immediately, uh, or near immediately. And then also archived later uh, elsewhere. You'll see it on the Twitter. We'll talk more about it uh, there for sure. Um, but today we are going to be interviewing Simon Carlson. He's the developer of A Song for Vigo. And it's an amazing game that we had just seen only two days ago at Indie 3. And we were so enamored by it that we needed to get in contact with the developer right away. And so Simon has been so kind to stay up late to come talk to us. Uh, he's over in Sweden. And so the time zone is a very big jump. And so please, uh, I would love to welcome uh, Simon Carlson. And I'm going to show you guys a trailer for A Song for Vigo. Are you? One moment. Just shuffling audio, audio scenes and stuff and making sure Indie 3 and Indie 4 are live. Always exciting. Okay, yep. here we go. You're good to go. Thank you. Song for Vigo. That was a song for Vigo, everyone. I want to uh, pre-warn, we're going to talk a lot about art and craft, uh, because this is such a very uh, very specifically designed game in, in a way that uh, has not been explored before, because the tools are so different for creating a game in paper craft versus uh, anything else. Oh, and um, on top of that, we also have a lot of themes 
that can be very, very dark. And so I just want to be very clear with everyone in chat and everyone who's watching that uh, there's going to be a lot of content warnings for uh, depression and suicide and infanticide. So all of those uh, are going to be parts of what we're going to talk about today. Um, but we're going to bring... Uh, would you have Simon in here? Yeah. Hey, Hi. Simon! Hello. I'm so glad to get to talk to you. Yeah, me too. Um, so I know you're very tired. No, no, it's all right. Uh, so I want to... I want to ask you in your own words what A Song for Vigo is about and um, where this is coming from. Um, yeah, um, <laughs> it's, it, it's hard to... Um, there's a lot of different it, themes going on in the game and there's a lot, yeah, of, uh, there's a lot it, of craft it's a, involved too. Yeah, it's, a, it's about um, a couple on their way home uh, from their vacation and... Um, they're kind of stressed and uh, irritated at each other, and um, they uh, kind of need to hurry home to get through the traffic jam. Mm -hmm. And uh, like in one short moment, they didn't see that uh, Vigo wasn't their, their child wasn't in the car, so they backed him over. Oh, mm -hmm. um, and uh, this game is like all about aftermath where you, the first thing you have to do is book your own son's funeral. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it's a, it's a quite depressing game. Um, yes. I, I, I'm kind of hesitant cause, or to call it a game since it's not a really a win or lose situation um, or a, something about collecting points or whatever. It's more uh, like an interactive story or mm -hmm. something. It's about people and relationships and cause and effect after events and how we how we go to express ourselves in times of trauma and times of need. Yeah. Um, so the first the first thing that I want to ask and one of the coolest things about a song for Vigo and like why it needs to exist. Uh, before I even get into any of the any of the myriad things that we could talk about, I want to talk about lighting. I want to talk All about right. how how do you manipulate and manage your lighting and capturing your the stages that you've set up within game spaces and what is the technology that's involved in all of that? Um, it's basically um, two desktop lamps. <laughs> um, it's not nothing advanced really uh, just two desktop lamps and uh, and uh, some lighting in there in the roof um, it's 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 just about trying to realize how the lighting will uh, would look in real life mm -hmm. if it's and if it's uh, some natural lighting or if it comes from a window or oh, and stuff. Yeah. So, um, so it's it's not really advanced because I can't really afford anything advanced. That's amazing. Yes. Um, I think that's a really that's a really powerful part of it. It's um, it's part of that indie spirit of of doing what you can with what you have. Yeah, uh, I I kind of I kind of like the whole. In yeah, totally. I I, I agree. Um, do do what you can with what you have. That's why I always kind of work with things that, like, I, I don't have a tripod for my um, camera. So I kind of mostly just stack boxes and put my camera and some uh, blue tack between. That's actually exactly what we're using, too. <laughs> um, which is kind of, <laughs> it, it's, it's kind of frustrating, but it's still, yeah, it kind of works for now. Um, so we have, it's we have cardboard boxes as well stacked up on um, each other with gaffer's tape connecting it. Gaffer tape is so good. It's so good. <laughs> I, I I I like I glue on the walls to get stuff to oh. stick there, mm -hmm. and gaffer tapes everywhere. And so yeah, I have like gaffer tape all over the workshop, or it's it's my 
it's really my uh, closet, mm -hmm. my walk-in closet, and um, I kind of refurnished it. And uh, that's brilliant. So it's like a workshop, uh, one meter wide in all directions. So it's not a big one. Mm -hmm. um, so when we're talking, the, the things that we are lighting, for everyone who's seen a song for Virgo and what it's being created with, uh, everything is in paper craft. Yeah. And so that's also a very physical material. Um, and that's what you're lighting. Those are the scenes that are being built out of. And uh, I'm wondering where that comes about and how that became the inspiration for how you wanted to tell this story. Um, I think I got like uh, the first idea from I, was, uh, I went to bed one night two years ago and I thought like I should do something with paper like some kind of murder mystery shit game something um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I came up with a term paper cut and then I kind of figured that the whole thing is more interesting to uh, to if it revolves ar around uh, everyday life mm -hmm. and uh, that's when like the idea re really came and uh, so I kind of tried to make a model uh, a sofa made of paper and I kind of realized that yeah works and uh, so I continued to make some models and yay wow. it worked so you are the, the catch about all of this is it's one thing to create models out of paper it's another thing to create game objects out of paper yeah it's, it, it's um, uh, one really difficult thing is that since it's everything is stop motion and Every scene has, or not every scene, but some scenes have uh, additional uh, light combinations from different parts. Mm -hmm. Like uh, in the kitchen in my game, it has four different lights. Oh. So, like, I need to, when a fridge is, the refrigerator is opening, I have to um, cut out and animate, like, every version of each light combination. So it's like 16 version of the same refrigerator. Oh, wow. Because I need the right light to um, to work nicely. So you have the detailed work of creating things in paper craft that's already very detailed, but then you add the other layer of how dynamic each scene has to be and that just sounds um, amazing to be able to put that together. Uh, yeah, I kind of hate myself for doing it sometimes because I'm like, oh, God, why did I start with this project? Um, but um, it's, it's still like when you're really done with something, you, you feel like so proud of yourself. That's, dude, I made, I made this... Uh, refrigerator in 16 versions yeah uh, and that's kind of cool so and not everything has like there are not all the scenes that have four different lights combination uh, some have just two um, which makes it easier to mm -hmm. um, to splice the images and cut them correctly um, but uh, it's uh, it, it, it takes its time. Yeah, and it turns out, I mean, it, it shows. All of the attention to detail uh, is, it, it, every single scene has a very evocative style to it that comes through in the textures that are used in the paper craft, um, the, the shapes that are made and how they overlay themselves on the scene and the expressive lighting. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> no, it, it, the, the hard work shows uh, every ounce of it. Uh, yeah, I kind of, I hope it does, because it's, uh, I guess that's kind of what stop motion is about, to see that, like, there's some uh, love put into it. Mm -hmm. um, and 
I don't want to. Of course, there's much love put into it when for those who make 3D models as well. But um, uh, I I kind of maybe it's more more recognizable um, if it, if it's stop motion. That's oh, this I, this is made of. There's something to be said with the, the form that it takes, the paper craft. That's something that you were creating with your hands. There's something physical involved, and so people can see every scene has been, has been touched. <laughs> it might, there, there has been contact, and maybe that's the kind of, uh, that's the kind of love that is in there. Uh, not that it's more or less than any other created objects, but... Um, the, the physicality of it, the tactileness of it is uh, just gorgeous and personal. Yeah, I, I, can, I kind of want the player to like see that it's made of real material, so it's, the story gets a bit closer still mm -hmm. to the player to see that this is made from reality and it's a game about reality. So, um, uh, One weird... Okay, I've got a technical question. Yeah. Um, you make everything out of paper, and that yeah. includes all of the architecture of each scene. Yeah. You're making, the walls are paper, the tables are paper, there's no other objects used. And I actually used one object um, huh. yesterday. Um, I tried to create a snowstorm um, with uh, um, baking soda and a fan. But uh, it didn't work. It didn't work that good because everything got into my eyes, and stuff. <laughs> so, uh, failure. Um, uh, I'm gonna make it out of paper later on because it didn't work. So. Even when you try to not use paper, you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not used to other materials. Get back to the paper. Yeah. Um, so you have a Kickstarter that's set up. A Kickstarter yeah. that ev uh, I'm seeing, I think people are actually uh, looking at it right now while we're here. Um, James, if you'd like to pull that up. Um, yep, he's working on it. There we go. I'm, I'm sorry for my crappy English because I'm not used to talking to Americans. <laughs> oh, you sound great. It's, it's no problem at all. I understand you perfectly. As yeah, long good, as you understand me, okay. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> if you need me to clarify anything, please do not hesitate. Um, of course. So we're looking at the Kickstarter, and I was wondering if you would talk about uh, what your goals are with the Kickstarter and what you uh, want to want want to give to people and how they can help. Um, my goal is to get enough cash to make this game happen. Um, Obviously, because that's what Kickstarter is about. Um, but uh, I kind of need twenty thousand dollars, and it will go to like licenses and working full time on this project uh, a year from now with like minimum wage, uh, minimum wages, uh, and then like buying materials and stuff because. It all, it's all expensive in the long run. You're giving this, a, you're giving this game away for ten dollars. Yeah. That is a steal. But, uh, yeah, but like, still, no one wants to pay like sixty or seventy dollars for a game nowadays. I, I, I don't like that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Like, a game, sure, like ten dollars, anyone can afford that. And then twenty dollars uh, for the soundtrack as well. Yeah, but These are if they amazing prices, especially if, for Kickstarter, if they buy the game, they they will, they will get the soundtrack in the game, and hear it there, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, but well, yeah, twenty dollars for uh, the downloadable soundtrack, and uh, yeah, uh, it's kind of it's it's so hard to kickstart stuff because you need to be like friendly to people. <laughs> Uh, and still really just get out there and get this recognized a, with. This is such a personal game, too. Yeah. So uh, you can connect, it is. You connect with so many people around the, the themes of this game. Um, 
and this this is something that just seems like it it needs to exist and and we need to help create the a song for Vigo. Yeah, you all need just pledge. <laughs> give me all your money. Um, but <laughs> honestly, we need to give you we need to give you paper. Yeah, <laughs> so you can keep making a song for Vigo. I actually, uh, I went out of all the paper yesterday, oh. so that was my last scene for the moment. Uh, which is uh, actually that video, uh, the neighborhood that I made. So this is which is. I still not have. I don't have a tripod yet, so it's kind of shaky camera, but uh, it kind of shows how uh, it's done on some seasons in the game. All right, then I'm so. gonna show. I'm gonna show the neighborhood. Yeah. Basically, my cat always get into the scenes and uh, destroys half of it. so much work involved in that. It's kind of sweaty. <laughs> that was amazing. Uh, I hate to use that uh, baking soda and flour and everything because it was so messy. But um, it, I'm, I'm kind of like, you, you just have to just do it. It looked so good though. That was the snow, right? Yeah. It's the winter, and it's the, and um, it's in chapter three when um, the snow falls in the village, and the first thing you have to do is like do them, uh, um, and the snow, snow tractor or snow plow, it's or what, what it's called, uh, it kind of blocks the entrance to your house, so you have to, pl uh, plow the entrance yourself, wow. and that's like the first mundane, task you have to do in chapter three. So. You're saying chapter three? How many chapters are there? Uh, five chapters. Wow. Uh, and each chapter is uh, like uh, revolving around different subjects. So the first chapter is like about booking your son's funeral and the apathy and grieving and pure depression. And then it later revolves in chapter two to get the character gets uh, obsessive compulsive disorder, mm -hmm. so it has to like repeat things uh, and like he he wants to fix uh, a, a lamp breaks, so he he really gets rewarded by fixing it. Uh, so he he still wants to fix things and fix things he can't fix. So he starts to also break some things. Um, so it's much about like you can't enter a specific room unless you like flick the switch ten times or something. Uh -huh. um, and then like the uh, third chapter is just like about pure boredom and being depressed and more like not going anywhere. Uh, you go to to the shrink and nothing happens, you, you feel no progression at all. Uh, and uh, I guess people don't if, if they experience such a loss, uh, like killing his own child. Mm -hmm. um, yep. And then uh, the fourth chapter is about infidelity, because uh, your wife will always blame you for uh, the mis mistake you made. 
so there will be infidelity as well. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I'll top it off with some suicidal thoughts in chapter five. <laughs> it sounds like a, uh, like a bad recipe, but uh, mm-hmm. I, I kind of like exploring but different subjects and topics. These are, this is, this is, this is how it, it, real people, this is how it works. This is this is what life is like, and this is yeah. It's it's like when when you play like I have I I'm playing games every day, uh, bad games, good games, and so so games. But mm-hmm. you save the world like a hundred times, and yeah. then you still like, oh great, I saved the world, but I didn't feel anything. I just move on to the next game. Uh, it's not like you actually cared about the people you saved, um, and like may- maybe Final Fantasy VII was the only world that I saved that I cared about the people in it, because they talked much about ending their lives and yeah. making sh- make- preparing for the uh, for the comet to come, um, preparing for the doom. And that's when I felt like. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of felt uh, or got emotional then. But nowadays, I'm never emotional. I'm playing a game, mostly. I mean, uh, we so. can we can do this hero with a thousand faces a bazillion times. We can play Journey all all day long, uh, but it's not ever really about people or individuals. No. Never, uh, and because this is what individuals are like, and. Uh, there is um, it may not be light hearted but there is definitely this uh, kind of running theme that I think is uh, being well explored by A Song for Vigo or at least the these things that I've seen uh, where you are playing with uh, what it's like to be depressed and what it's like to go through these complex emotions and the, the path that is um, being used and I'm kind of using the word play in a, a very different sense in that um, it's it's being activated or just... Yeah, just interact. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I, kind of, I kind of made this game because I was real depressed like mm-hmm. two years ago and I still kind of eat those antidepressants. Um, and I my shrink or therapist told me that uh, you need to expose yourself to the anxiety. And this is kind of what I'm doing with creating this game. Like, I'm trying to make something out of the uh, the feelings that I get mm-hmm. and do something more productive out of it. Absolutely. So it's my kind of motivation as well. As, uh, all, um, it's a bit self-therapy uh, as well. I've seen. I've actually seen the uh, Kickstarter is actually starting to go up, which means everything to me. And I think that uh, this is the thing that Indie Three is here for, uh, at 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 least in one respect, um, is to just help these kinds of games that are very personal exist in some kind of larger spectrum. And if we can help, just even like by supporting a single developer who is making something from their heart and uh, that which all of our indie three developers have they're, they're all making from their heart um, yeah it, it's like t- today the triple A doesn't have heart they, they may think they have um, but they don't uh, it's hard for a company to have one heart when there are like a thousand employees I yeah I think what you especially mean by heart is that they just don't have individuals or any kind of mm. individualism yeah that and, we uh, can we can use on at this level um not that it's for for good or for bad but just that here at uh at this level at the the kinds of creations that we're making um where it is so personal it is out of cardboard boxes and gaffer tape uh, that we can express the ideas that everyone is talking about. This is what the people have asked for. And if a song for Vigo can't get funded, then what could? 
Yeah, I'm I'm kind of like that, like. And it's ten dollars. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm kind of, I'm I'm kind of like frustrated sometimes because there are like twenty five magazines who wrote about it, and like, oh, this is a great game, <laughs> but I don't see that in the funding, unfortunately. Oh, um, absolutely. So, but but a rock paper shotgun wrote about it yesterday, so that made they me wrote a really, really great article about it too. Yeah, so I'm really happy about that. Mm -hmm. um, I hope it kind of gets that snowball effect. Yep. No, I'll uh, ap after this, once I'm able to step back from Indie 3, I'll be able to <laughs> also support a song for Vigo and be very, very proud about doing that. Yeah, I, I'm, I, I really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. um, and I, 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 I want to like help people with this game somehow mm -hmm. um but people who experience similar tragedies um or are depressed or uh, have similar struggles that they can play it and feel that they are not alone in this world that's amazing and i've been already gotten like several mails from uh, game developers who told that they are depressed and they uh, really want to play this game to get better somehow and uh, it's it's really so nice to hear in that regards then where do you find reprieve either within the game or within your own life uh what does <laughs> I'm where sorry do you what find, does uh where do you uh, find a safe place uh to kind of either escape from depression or identify with it yeah, I, I kind of I guess I have a, a life um, uh, outside of the workshop but then I kind of just play the piano or something else uh, I can I, I really use uh, I want to use my creativity to mm -hmm. escape sometimes and I mean this is so this is something that's really personal for kind of indie 3 as a whole we do a lot of work about uh, identity and individuals and mm. when it comes to game development at the individual level there are a lot of game creators that are depressed and using game development as an outlet for that and it's yeah. so healthy and it's such a, a amazing idea because of how it involves so many different skills and you can always kind of put your hands on something new, whether it's art or sound or programming um, and design and play. And there's just so many healthy outlets there. Is, yeah, is there no any doubt. Is there that that comes through in the game itself in Vigo? Um, like what, what, kind so. of, what kind of play uh, is happening in there for the main character? Um... How do you mean some that's yeah it is a, the, the the players will get better by playing it do you mean that's true um I meant for uh for Vigo personally do or not for Vigo personally but for the main character personally um do do they have any outlets as well uh yeah um he actually writes a, a fictional blog right now um which he or I wrote, I've been writing for the last couple of months. I can give you the email address, or no, not the email, but the blog address here in the um, chat room. It's, oh, the um, main character hosts a blog yeah. here. In, <laughs> yeah, amazing. Uh, it's like he, he writes about his life and his friends and his values, his like... Uh, kind of conservative American from a really ordinary happy family kind of mm -hmm. life. Oh. So um, he's like blogging about his uh, neighbor who got recently got cancer um, and other things. And the, the strange thing is that people comment and think that this blog is for real, obviously, because I doesn't, I don't mention that it's fictional. Um, so people are like commenting that, oh, uh, I mean, you're in my prayers tonight and stuff. Mm. Um, which is kind of 
fun, scary, and unethical, but I still hmm. kind of want that. That is that makes it such a, an interesting artifact. It, uh, like you said, it might be a little bit manipulative. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's that's a interesting kind of line to walk. Uh, I can. I, but it's also for me to, as a developer, to yeah. know the character a bit more and experience his values mm -hmm. um, and that he's a bit lonely, lonely sometimes and his friends are moving from town are and, you thinking uh, of uh, at some point saying that this is like a, a fictional blog that this is yeah maybe when uh, it's released but mm -hmm. for now it's uh, it can be our secret <laughs> um but uh, yeah, I I I kind of really I I want this kind of research in the game because I can't make a game about losing a, a child without having lost a child or doing research about it. And you've done and, a lot of research about it too. Yeah, I'm kind of I'm I'm interviewing people who lost their children, um, and they're like sharing their stories what happened and uh, one woman who uh, has a very similar story she actually also happened to uh, back over his son on his birthday uh, with a car and uh, I kind of got really emotional on, on that talk because her son's name was Simon and uh, she herself was also working with stop motion so I was like, oh, the similarities. Uh, so it feels sometimes like, damn, maybe it's my destiny to do this game. I, I, would, I just want to be there to help in any ways that I can. And <laughs> Please do. <laughs> hopefully this is somewhere that, that it can help. Uh, yeah. I want to know, know about the soundtrack. Hmm? Uh, you have a soundtrack at the at the twenty dollar level, which is absolutely a steal, and uh, that comes with the game. And I want to know uh, where and how the soundtrack's being developed. By who? Um, I kind of uh, I've been like composing uh, piano music. Oh, like, that, that's right. That's your that's your piano music then. Yeah. Ah. Um, and uh, I I started to do composing it like eight years ago during school breaks um, I had nothing to do mm -hmm. uh, waiting between lessons so and I just started playing piano and uh, I, I, I can't really uh, read sheet music so that's like the main reason why I, co I compose it myself mm -hmm. um, so but I, I kind of want to have like a combination of the music from uh, Jan Tiersen. Um I don't know. She, he made a music f uh, to Emily from Montmartre. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm also inspired by the composer Eric Satie. Mm -hmm. uh, I kind of like to pull out all these cross references and uh, make something out of it, and uh, yeah, create something new. The the music in in the game that we've seen in trailers and we've seen in all of these things is a really cool thing. Yeah, uh, thanks. It, it's it's really amazing, and to hear that it is also a part of it, it, just how much this is a, a one person production um, is so inspiring and uplifting, and uh, isn't is especially inspiring just because of how much artisan craft is involved. Um, that every part of this game is is Simon Carlson, I guess. Uh, yeah, I hope. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, 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 I like to work alone because I, uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know, but I don't like to compromise no. my feelings. Um, and that, that's kind of why I want to do the work on the indie scene because... Yeah, I, I mean, it maybe even is more amazing to me that a single person can have this much craft and talent and 
ability. Um, you make me blush. <laughs> oh, I'm I'm very serious about this. This is such, just such a cool project, and the more I hear about it, the more excited I get, and the more I I just know that this is something that needs to be seen. Uh, I, yeah, I hope that it gets funded. Like, it's like every day is a fucking emotional roller coaster. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like every day, is like, oh no, it's, it won't get funded. Then, then someone pledges like ten dollars, and I'm like, yay! There's, then, there's only fifteen uh, days left, yeah, and so we have a lot of work to do. But yeah. this is something that can totally be done, and I've seen it many, many times. So I urge you to keep faith, and please let us help. And we will. Yeah. <laughs> we can. We can do the things to help you. You're welcome. Um, and and the the biggest pledge is like two thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah. For the really rich dudes and dudettes. Um, if anyone can pledge it at the 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 top tiers, uh, those are the things that make these things happen. Just in a single moment, you can be the person to make a Kickstarter exist. A project that probably maybe not have existed without you. Um, those those top tiers are essential, um, uh, and like the top tier is kind of like a bit exhibitionistic, or if that's the word, um, it's kind of out there. But uh, it's like you you get invited to a concert on a lonely island in Sweden, uh, in the middle of a sea. Oh, that's way cool. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, if someone has that much money, please give it. <laughs> um, that is a that is a difference maker, right? That is yeah, like, no doubt. Yeah. Uh, but I... I, even, I uh, even without that, and for anyone who doesn't have... Uh, you guys may not have uh, much to be able to help and donate, uh, but if anyone out there can just tweet out that, uh, that the Kickstarter... Or tweet out that we're talking with Simon Carlson. Um, oh, I guess. Uh, sorry. Uh, tweet out that we uh, have talked to Simon Carlson, um, and all of these other bits and pieces that come involved. Um, just giving messages out on Facebook and on Reddit or on any of these uh, networks that we use, Tumblr. Um, like th that is a huge push uh because this is a game that like it needs to exist and if the nominations for igf is anything that any of you guys would know about uh you'd know another stop motion game dominique pomplamoose uh was a, a another thing that the igf recognized as being hugely influential and hugely important uh without awarding it anything and so um these this is still this is like one of those works a song for Vigo that um, is still something that is desperately needed within both indie scenes especially to represent indie scenes and the things that we can make as individuals in gaming and play spaces but also gaming as a whole um, the the craftsmanship of the paper craft the the lighting that goes into it the soundtrack uh, the the soft dulcet tones of the the piano as it plays. Uh, these ideas of the seasons of each uh, chapter being its own uh, a different season and a different emotion a different style of uh, how we express our pain the, like this is everything that you all talk about on your social networks this is everything that is what uh, we've been saying needs to happen and Simon Carlson's making it just yes. you're doing it <laughs> Uh, I hope I am. I, I basically want everyone to just feel, yes. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, um, I have this uh, strange competition because people actually start putting out posters um, on different places, leading to this to my Kickstarter campaign. Really? I have this link, um, which I kind of try to uh, see if I can pull make. It. So so it's like. Right now, it's in front of the Eiffel Tower and the Hollywood sign, and in Tokyo. And it's uh, I so I just got like honored by the just pure fandom uh, of uh, oh, that's awesome! People. Can we get that on the so, uh, 
So it's now now it's a, like a computation. I made it like if you put up a poster in a strange place, just take a photo of it and um, and uh, tell me where it is, and you, the best photo will get a uh, NPC in the game, a character. <laughs> That's a cool competition. Yeah. I hope so. <laughs> so these things are in just they're just hanging around, and if you can get someone to get a picture of themselves with the sign they can be an npc no no no, no they, they they can print it out and put it up on other oh, places oh, oh right you can print this out yeah Y'all that's can, part you of competition go take a take a screenshot of this right now quick 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 we gotta put this places and uh, some fan actually put it in front of uh or on a tree outside of each tree so uh, it's <laughs> <laughs> no way yeah, it's kind of fun. That's <laughs> and uh, your some own Japanese personal, your own personal invasion. Yeah, it's, it's so crazy. Some Japanese people today tweeted about it uh, in Japanese, Ooh. and I was like, "All right, <laughs> that's awesome. That's great it's so news." Crazy. Yeah, <laughs> that's a really crazy. cool flyer, though. <laughs> well done. But, uh, yeah, I, ho- I hope it's kind of boosts the Kickstarter or something. So, um, it is 2 o'clock, and... uh, Actually, we got started about 15 minutes late, so we do have a few more minutes. That's right, that's right. And Um, then we will go to the, I believe, the Indie Showcase at that point. mm -hmm. Is... Oh, go for it. What? I thought you were going to say something. No, I just said yay. (laughs) Oh, yay. Yeah, yay. Uh, is there anything else that you want to say about uh, a song for Vigo? Anything that we haven't talked about yet that uh, you want to tell people about? Um, it's um, it's a game where you have like invisible choices. Oh. And that, like, some every chapter has different invisible choices, and it's not like a window popping up saying yes or no. It's just that player makes it without knowing and that has long-term or short-term consequences in the game uh, which will some choices like for example in chapter 3 you will have an appointment at the therapist and you have to warm up the car but if you forget you will be forced to walk there instead and um, you will accidentally fall on a spot of black ice and that will trigger an event where you have to spend time at the hospital instead. Wow. So the, it's kind of these invisible choices that uh, I hope to make some replay valuable values as well. Yeah. In it. It's going to be fun to write the walkthrough for that. I hope. <laughs> someone will be able to play through the game and then see someone else's play through the let's play for it, especially, may even be something that would be cool to watch. But yeah, it's it's really hard to make a game like out of uh, out of choices and affecting. So it's like sometimes it affects, it triggers new scenes and environments. Sometimes it triggers new dialogues and conversations with your wife. Uh, so it, it's like a variation of stuff that triggers depending on what you do. Wow, I. That is a whole aspect of it that I, I kind of I kind of understood, but I didn't know exactly how it was implemented or executed, and that just it makes it even so much more impressive. Uh, it's it's basically just, um, well, I guess coding or mm-hmm. making, um, yeah, like variables. Yeah, what are you using or, to to? Build all this. Um, I'm using uh, Visionary Studio. Oh. It's called because um, I've like all my life mm-hmm. thought like I can't do games because I can't code um, and I can't code really. Um, but then I found out like about these engines like RPG Maker and Game Maker and Adventure Game Studio and Visionary Studio. So I kind of got hooked on Visionary Studio. So it's a game made for adventure games, or an uh, engine, yeah. engine made for adventure games, uh, and it's really awesome. Well, so 
uh, everyone, please, please go help A Song for Vigo uh, to make its Kickstarter campaign a success. Um, it's absolutely, it's an essential thing um, that this is a game that needs to exist in a, in a much bigger way than it, it currently does, and it deserves it too. Um, you will all get hugs. And we'll all get hugs. Did you hear that? Yeah. Indie E3, awesome. Indie 3 exclusive, we'll all get hugs. Yeah, I will hug every one of you. Oh. In a not creepy way. Oh, even better. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, there's there's so much here. Um, you can buy it. It's a $10 digital copy and a virtual hug. Um, the Oh, and the you have a release date, it seems. Mm, yeah, if it gets funded, it will be released uh, in the next uh, year at summer. Wow, that's wow, that's amazing. Yeah, well, if it gets funded, yes. uh, it's not. It's 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 still not sure. It depends if it gets funded or not. So it's so. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you so much, Simon, for being a part of Indie E three and uh, trusting us to uh, help you get your Kickstarter out there in some way. Hopefully, yeah, uh, it, it's totally awesome, uh, and I I really hope that people uh, kind of like or get inspired by just doing their own doing their own shit. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, because nothing is like, it's nothing is impossible, even if you can't code. Because there are there are many awesome engines. That's Aren't amazing. There? That that's the there you go, Indie Three. That's that's dropping the mic right there. All right. That's the sentiment. Uh, that that really represents a lot of what we're trying to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I I I don't know. I have no more to say, I guess, because I'm just burbing it out right now. So. Uh, so, all right. Well, thank you, Simon, for being a part of this. And uh, you can catch A Song for Vigo. It's on Kickstarter. Please go back. It, it is only $10. And it's $20 if you to get the soundtrack as well. Uh, the goal is only $20,000. It is, it is not a high, high number. And it doesn't have a lot of time left if it's going to see... The light of day, and if it doesn't, then that's a, that is a tragedy for all of us. So, uh, please, please do anything that you can to help get the word out there about a word for Vigo, a song for Vigo. Get the word out there for a song for Vigo, um, even if it's just like hashtag Vigo, um, just anything at this point is can can help. Uh, oh, you got something, James? I was just going to thank Simon for coming and talking with us today. And yeah. uh, we are going to take a short intermission and then go on to the Indie Showcase portion of our programming for today. Awesome. And very thank and thank you for just letting me to letting me talk. All right, thank you. We will yeah. do that and I will play some music for the audience while we do the switchover. <laughs> 